How's good, how good does it feel to be back? Feels good. I'm um, after being in quarantine for a couple of days, and you know, I'm just ready to get back out there as soon as possible. And I was always ready to get back out there, you know. But uh, yeah, it's feel good. How frustrating was it to have kind of your start of your rookie camp postponed? Yeah, um, it was a downer, of course. But you know, you always got to control the things that you can control, and that was something I couldn't control at the time. So um, you got to press through it and persevere through it. Coach Manske was saying yesterday that obviously you were able to do some virtual things and kind of stay. There's oh, yeah. nothing like being on the field, right? Is yeah. It, did that put you behind a little bit, or do you feel like you can catch up quickly? Yeah, no, it doesn't really put you behind. Um, as long as you do the walkthroughs in the house and, <laughs> you know, you uh, make sure you get, a, get the extra study in. And, uh, it's, it was actually a time that I took advantage of, uh, being able to open up the playbook even more and, and watch a lot of the practices and watch a lot of the games. So um, it wasn't a time where, you know, I had to set back or anything. You said you did walkthroughs in your house. Did you, like, have to move furniture? <laughs> what room did you do? Yeah, yeah, you use all kinds of stuff, man. You use fruits. You use um, – I had these little dumbbells that I use and, uh, just kind of moving the formations around, making sure I align right, and things like that. So, who's on the other end of those with you? How often do you do them, and do you think that they help you kind of keep stay in the loop? Or what do you mean with uh, the other end in terms of the virtual Your virtual walkthroughs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, with the virtual walkthroughs, I do those when uh, the team is actually doing their walkthrough. So it's just me. Okay. Um, I, I have the, the play sheet, so I'm able to um, do the alignments right and do the formations right. You were a big hitter. How anxious are you to be able to do that out here? Yeah, that's one of the things I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, um, in terms of physicality, in terms of the uh, aggressiveness, to be able to display that and show, show the team what I, what I can do. So. Do, you, do you know when you'll be in on the uh, team? Yeah. Um, I should be in today, a few reps today. And, uh, yeah, I, after that, you know, it's up to the doctors. But uh, I believe that I am in a couple of reps today. So. Okay, I know he's not in your position group. What's your impressions of Clowney? Um, hey, he's a he's a relatable guy. I can tell you that. Um, I haven't had much conversations with him, but uh, the, the conversations that I have had, he's a very relatable guy, a very understanding guy, and, and you know can relate to younger players. He's flashed for everybody out on the yeah. field. Does he do that for for you guys as well? I mean, do you notice what he's able to do? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, in the start of all our meetings, our team meetings or defensive meetings, uh, we, we list the uh, bone collectors of the day, and he was our bone collector actually. So. Yeah, he uh, he definitely shined for us. What can he and Miles Garrett do for you and the, the linebackers? Well, it's attention. Um, you know, those guys are all stars, and when you have all stars on the team, uh, you know, a lot of the game plan is going to revolve around them, um, and it, it takes some off the linebackers. Um, but you know, all in all, you know, they'll be looking to uh, give 100% with with everybody. But like I said, they're they're all stars of the team and all stars of the defense, and everybody has a role, and you know, that's their roles. Jeremiah, playing that schedule you did at, at Notre Dame, how do you think that helped prepare you for the yeah. NFL kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, Notre Dame, uh, you know, the schedule was, was vigorous. Uh, the schedule was not only just uh, within our realm in which we played, but it was also, you know, we had games in Cali, we had games um, in Virginia, so we was able to get a lot of exposure. <coughs> and, you know, I think that... I need some water. <coughs> Thank you, appreciate it. Forgive me. <clears throat> Join in that too. Nah, nah, I'm good. Appreciate it. But yeah, it helped a lot. You know, anytime you go to a D1 program that is such, um, has a high schedule and has high exposure as Notre Dame, you, you're going to be prepared for the next level. Speaking of your role, some people see you as like a hybrid. You're kind of maybe built a little more like a safety than a linebacker. Yeah. How do you view yourself on this defense? Uh, well, I'm playing Will right now. I'm playing linebacker right now. And, and that's just how I view myself as a linebacker. Um, you know, regardless of you know what others think, you know we got to control the controllables, as I always say. <laughs> How did you come across number twenty-eight? What's the story behind that? Uh, I tried to make something up at first. You know, it was like, oh, well, you know, eight minus two. You see, I had six in college, but you know, it, it was just a number that was available that I, you know I saw fit. You know, I, saw, I really liked it, and uh, it was some other options I had, but you know, twenty-eight was the one that stood out to me. So. Get used to when you see a picture of yourself with number um, yeah, I am getting used to it. You know, I was, um, you know, I had a sign in a couple of weeks back, and I was, it was, I was on the Browns run, and I was putting six on him. Like, oh, damn, <laughs> twenty-eight. You know, but I'm getting used to it, and uh, it's turning out fine. So. I know you, you tweeted your asymptomatic, the mm -hmm. zero symptoms. Did, did that stay that way, or did you have anything pop up? That, that yeah, yeah, it did stay that way uh, all throughout the ten days. Yeah. So you feel 100% physically now? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Um, how much do you 
you guys miss with Anthony not being out there for a little while? And how encouraging was it that he didn't need to have surgery after it looked kind of scary Monday? Yeah. Um, well, Anthony's a huge part of the, of the linebacker role. He's a veteran. Uh, he's good with the playbook. He's good with the communications. I um, mean, you know, you, you lose a little bit, but, you know, as this is the professional leagues, um, you know, somebody has to step up. And, um, you know, I was just actually just had a conversation with him um, in the um, in the indoor, and, uh, and he's doing fine, and he's, you know, re ready to recover fast. So. Speaking of that room, it's pretty competitive. A lot of people think that there might be a notable name that doesn't make the roster. Have you sensed that competition just even coming in as a rookie that yeah. their guys really push one another? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like I said, again, this is the professional leagues, and uh, it's a business, and, and everybody in there understands that. And uh, we, we all uh, think of ourselves as brothers, uh, first and foremost, but then we also know that it's a competition, and we just try to play off of that and, and make sure that we push each other to the best of our abilities. When you see, uh, speaking of that, Mac Wilson making – like he did yesterday. Yeah. I'm sure you watch all the practice you were out there too. Yeah. Um, does that go through your head like, hey, you know, yeah. there's someone for me to catch? Like, how do you, how do you, yeah. No, nah, Mac, um, I actually called that play out, by the way, before it happened. <laughs> so, but no, nah, Mac, he's, he's a guy that's definitely a guy that I look up to, um, a guy that you, know, you look, look forward to uh, competing with. Um, he's athletic, uh, he's a hard hitter, uh, and he knows the defense. He's been here. And um, it's definitely a guy that I'm looking forward to leaning on, uh, but also competing with. Did you call it the, the play the offense was running, or did you know Mac was going to pick it? No, no. I, I said what I said was I yelled it out. Oh. I said get rich, Matt. <laughs> yeah. And that's basically like get rich in terms of you know interception, BD, whatever you can get. But, so yeah. does he owe you like an assist on that? Yeah, does he owe me? Nah, he don't owe me. I I really owe him. You know all the time I miss. So <laughs> to be honest with you, but. Yes, I was known as Wu. What are they calling you here? Jeremiah or well, okay or yeah, it's a mixture. I got Jock from the rookies. Uh, the vets, you got JOK and, they, and Jock. Uh, some of the medical staff, I got Wu. Um, so it's a mixture of everything. I just got to be attentive to <laughs> to the syllables and make sure I you know, answer what I'm called. Are you all right with all of them? I'm all right with all of them. I'm not a picky guy. When, hey, don't call me that. No, I'm a, I'm a pretty chill guy when it comes to names. And just as long as it's you know nothing disrespectful, I'm good. When you, look at, when you think about how yeah. rookie year is going to play out, like, do you set goals and what are they? Uh, yeah, you set goals. Uh, first, you set uh, team goals because you are going to be, uh, you know, uh, on a team. You're stepping into an organization that's looking to, you know, uh, build the culture. So the first goals you set is uh, as a team um, or as yourself is for the team. Um, and then you set individual goals like rookie of the year, defensive player of the year, and things like that. So uh, you always set goals and, you know, you write them down, put them up on your walls and put them up on the scene or whatever you can do to make sure that you have those things um, in sight. So. Rookie, do you feel like something that's attainable? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I don't think if you ask any rookie um, in this draft, you say, hey, you know, you going to be a rookie of the year? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, everybody's going to say, yeah, everybody has that desire to, um, you know, the next step is really just to put the action in. So. Can you expound on the, the Bone Collector Award? Is that a daily thing? Is that for yeah. defensive guys only? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's defensive guys. It's just, you know, uh, being able to create havoc on the ball, um, and that's the origin of it, uh, just being able to get takeaways, being able to um, create difficulty for the offense. And the more difficulty you create, um, you know, the more bones you get. So. Is it a, is it like a necklace of bones? <laughs> no, I'm not sure what the reward is. Uh, uh, Coach Wood say he'll, he'll get it to us at the end and see who the winner is. But, but that's a daily, so you vote daily. on that, or, or what? How does that come about? Uh, well, it's numbers. Um, you know, you, you have an interception, you get a certain amount of points. You Get a fumble, you get a certain amount of points, and so on. And then, Will, you said more. that um, playing at ND gets you ready to play on the field, especially at this level. What about in terms of expectations? Because we know in South Bend, <laughs> yeah. a lot is. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, you have an organization um, in South Bend that's, that's very prestige in terms of um, its history. Um, same here. You know, you have a high expectations with um, the people waiting for you know to go escalate, and the same with Notre Dame. Uh, they're expecting you to win. They're expecting you to win here, and the fans want what they want, and uh, the team wants what they what they want. So, uh, it's, it, it, I kind of see it in the same light in terms of uh, my perspectives.